Welcome to church. We are so glad that you're here. And we want you to know that when you walk through our doors today, you didn't just walk into a building. You walked into a family. And regardless of who you are, where you came from, or what you look like, you are welcome here. Because at this church, we believe that God is love. And that He is in the business of rekindling lost passions, restoring broken dreams, and filling empty lives. At this church, we believe that life in Christ is not a formula of rules and laws, but a moment-by-moment -moment relationship with Jesus. And His love is infinite and everlasting, without pretense or conditions or discrimination. At this church, we can't stand religion, but we love God. And if you're not quite sure what the difference is yet, we can't wait to show you. We're glad you joined us today. Welcome to church. Good morning. Welcome to Lakeside Worship Center. God is good all the time. You know, this is October, and this is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And I just want to say to you that one out of eight women will be diagnosed with breast cancer in their lifetime. It is so important that you do self-examination, that you go get the proper clinicals done. And it is important, too, that you talk with your family members. Talk with your grandma if she's still around. Talk with your great-grandma, your aunties, your cousins, and find out if anyone in your family has ever been diagnosed with breast cancer. And it's important that you do self-examinations. And I'd just like to say to you this morning that we have a special treat for you this morning. We have a young lady that is going to give a testimony that is a survivor. And her faith is like to the top. God bless you. Let's go worship.
so good Lord, you are good You've been better than good I can't Hello everyone, my name is Tamika Armstrong and I just want to have a brief conversation to just tell you my story. I hope this can change your life. I know it has changed mine tremendously. I know 2020 has been a crazy, crazy year, but God is still in control in the midst of it all. This year, March, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. I know the cancer word is something that everyone, when you hear that, you are ready to just die or you feel like you have no life left and I am not going to lie I was the same way when I was diagnosed with breast cancer the first question is God why me why would you pick me I faithfully serve you I tell everybody about you I sing praises to you already every day and you have me go through this you know I just lost my sister in 2018 to this disease and now me I have to go through this I have to be strong for my family my everyone around me but you chose me so when I did receive that diagnosis, yes, it was rough, but I'll tell you, God was in the midst of it all. After my diagnosis in April, you know, I did meet with the doctors. They gave me my options. I could have the spot removed. I can have one breast removed or I can have both. I don't want to have to go through this again. I don't want my family to have to go through this again. So I decided at that point to remove both breasts. Um, I know my mom at that time was looking at me kind of shocked. Here I am 37 years old and I'm cutting a part of me. I'm cutting something that made me feel like I was a woman. I was, a, I was losing a piece of me. But I would rather do that so that I'm able to be here for my family. Had my surgery in April. Um, everything went fine. I wasn't able to have the support of anyone there because of COVID. But God was there with me. I stayed overnight. I went in on a Wednesday. By Friday, I was home, up, walking. You would have never known that I had a surgery. But again, that is the power of God. Um, I had that surgery. was perfectly fine. Next, I have to go for the oncologist appointment just to see what is going to be my plan. Will I have to have chemo? Will I have to have radiation? Um, so I went to that appointment. Had my mom right alongside with me. Now... This particular appointment, I was kind of nervous because I don't know what to expect. You're basically going to tell me how am I going to treat the cancer that was in my body. I met with him and I felt that he gave me a death sentence. You know, luckily I did have my mom there with me that was an advocate for me, but he wanted me to do 16 weeks of chemo and no radiation. That's basically every week I'll be doing some form of chemo. When I left that appointment, I was defeated. I was defeated. I felt like I had nothing. You know, this is a doctor. And at that point, as me and my mom were walking, I just told her, God got to see me through this. I know that this man has a job to do, but I know that I serve somebody higher that is going to get me through this. At that point, she went to Cancer Center Treatments of America. She called them, gave them my information. I think that appointment was on the 24th with cancer treatment. Um, at that appointment, they did a scan on my body just to see was there any cancer left. Now, mind you, that previous doctor that wanted to give me 16 weeks told me they wouldn't do a scan. So how would you know really what I need to do and what plan is there for me? We went to cancer center treatments. I went there on the 24th. They did blood work, did a scan um, by the 28th. I came back with the results of the cancer was gone. There was no cancer. But here it is. Had I just went off of that first opinion, I would have already started treatment. And that was not meant for me. That was God giving my mother the discernment to say, no, I need you to go get another second opinion. Talk to someone else. You don't have to go off of that first thing. So thank God for that, that he allowed my mother to have enough discernment to say, no, we're going to go with someone else. Went with that someone else. I started my chemo in April. No, I started in May. Sorry, I started in May. Um, first treatment went very well. I got myself a little sick because I did not take my pills. So that was one of the first times that I was ever sick. And shockingly enough, it was Mother's Day when they supposed to celebrate me. And I'm not even feeling healthy enough to celebrate. So I only had to have four rounds of chemo once every three weeks. So basically what that meant, every Thursday, I would go in, 
every three weeks, have my chemo treatment, I had a pick line put in. So I didn't have where they would put a little, like a little machine here to pump your medicine. I had the choice of having them actually put a pick line in my arm. So this pick line would go in my arm to where it would go all the way up through my heart so that we are able to get this medicine into my body. I had to do that a total of four times. So I have battle wounds right on my arm from that. So I will never forget that at all. But God was right there with me each and every time that I was on that table. Chemo, I rocked that out the park. I completed that in July. I completed that July 16th of 2020. And that within itself was a celebration. I wasn't over. I still had a little bit of a journey to go because now I have to complete radiation. But if I was able to get through chemo with no problems, I could only imagine what God was gonna do next. Okay, chemo, I lost a little bit of hair, I did, but as y'all see, it's coming back already. I lost my hair and I did have to cut some things off, but I'm going to get that back. The story is not even over, y'all. Chemo, rock that, so now I have radiation. Don't know what to expect with radiation, now I'm nervous, I have to go through a whole nother treatment. This one is six and a half weeks. So I just went through the four of chemo. So now I have six and a half weeks. The difference is I have radiation every single day, every day. So it's not once every couple weeks, it's every single day. So I'm like, oh man, now I gotta change my work schedule and I have to do all of this for this treatment. But God, I was able to do so. My treatments every day were at 7.45, so I would get up each morning, make the drive downtown with my mom, right alongside with me. I was able to complete those treatments. Now, mind you, I see the doctor for my radiation. I saw him maybe once a week. So each week that he's seeing me, he's looking at my skin like, your skin is looking really good, and I know I'm pumping you with radiation, but your skin looks really good. And he's like, I don't understand this. I said, I serve a high and mighty God. Like, I don't know about you, but my God is good, and he watched after his children. So it wasn't until the last couple of days of my radiation that I experienced any type of reaction. Of course, my skin is darker, which is expected, but that wasn't until probably my last couple of days of treatment. That's nobody but God. I promise you through the midst of all of this, God has been in control. And when I say the only thing that has allowed me to get through this is God. The one scripture verse in the midst of this that has held me through it all is Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I have that tatted on my back. That's something that I got for my sister when she passed away. And that has carried me through this entire journey. Let me say all praise to God. I finished radiation September 30th of 2020. So your girl is done with all treatments. No more treatments, no more chemo, no more radiation. The hard part has been over and through it all. God has been an amazing integral part for me. So also, I know I have other support. It wasn't just me by myself. I know y'all hear me talking about another guy. That other guy is my husband, Derek. Hi, my name is Derek Armstrong. Um, this is my better half, Tamika, as you've already met her. Um, we have been married for five years, um, even though we've actually known each other since high school. Um, so, you know, again, going through this journey um, with my beautiful wife has been tough on all of us, um, extremely tough on her, but it has also affected other aspects of our family. Um, you know, as you guys can see, like, I love to eat. And I also love to cook as well. Um, that's something I do on a daily basis. You know, before this happened in the quarantine, I would maybe cook one meal a day. Now, with being home every day, having the kids every home every day, I'm just a regular chef where I eat three meals a day. Um, and not even including late night snacks and <laughs> kid snacks as well. So it's an all day thing. Um, but you know, and it's not even just cooking. I mean, that was something I was already doing, you know, being able to pick up other aspects of the home. I've done more laundry, sweep more floors, than I do yard work these days. Sometimes the inside work has to come before the outside work um, because we got to make sure things are still in order around the house. Um, so, but I, I have found myself um, being very, uh, having a great time enjoying Tamika, enjoying helping her out, seeing her smile when she thinks that she is 
you know, going through treatment and still has to come home and clean up, but she gets home and it's already cleaned up. Or she gets home and she don't have to worry about what's for dinner. She can smell it when she opens up the front door. So, um, you know, going through that together, I think has been great. And I've been, you know, she's actually been an inspiration to me. Seeing her fight has just, you know, made me feel good about, you know, you could do anything. You know, she talks about, uh, you know, you could do anything, you know, through God. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm right by her side cheering her along the entire way yeah he's been a great support i mean that has helped me along with god you know as women we lose things and when you have a great guy that's there with you like i had my moments i didn't want to show him like i didn't i didn't feel comfortable even though you are my husband i as a woman didn't want to show that to him i felt he'll look at me like oh my god what if why well I, what am i supposed to do with that i didn't know if he would still look at me the same you know i have a lot of things that have changed with my body you know it's not the same that it was before we got married i mean i'm glad he was able to enjoy it before i had to get him cut off but i mean it has been a great great journey um having him with me cooking because i do not like to cook i mean i will but i prefer whoever enjoys it to do it so it has been a great journey. I mean, without him, I don't think I would have been able to be nothing, you know, important enough for my children to be able to be supportive for them. So it took a village to help me through this. My husband, my daughter, my son, my mom. It's been a plethora of individuals. And I'm just thankful that in the midst of the COVID, he allowed us to go through this because I even think our marriage got closer. Um, even getting closer to him, even getting closer to God has been a great thing. I've gotten closer to reading my word. So I am very appreciative that he chose me to go through this journey in the midst of all of this. Because even with all the confusion that's going on in the world, God has still been in control. And I'm a living witness to show you that if you have your faith in him and put it 100% in him and block out the outside noise, everything is going to be fine. Do not let a diagnosis diagnose, keep you and hold your life. It doesn't have to be that way. You can continue to live your life. I still get up every day, be with my kids. I walk. I do everything that I would do before. If anything, it's just allowed me to appreciate the people and the things that I have in my life more so now than ever. So I'm thankful to God you chose this soldier of yours to handle this battle and to continue to give your word and to let them know without God nothing is possible and i agree i mean she like she mentioned as far as you know not letting a diagnosis or something like that keep you down her attitude has been joyous throughout this entire time it actually makes me think of a verse you know when you say um you know trust in the lord with all your heart and lean on your own understanding you know in all your ways acknowledge him and he'll direct your path straight um being with her together has brought me closer to God, has opened my eyes up to some things, has allowed me to grow spiritually. Like she mentioned, our marriage has grown through this, um, growing pains, but also come out on the other side, blossoming like a beautiful flower. So I think that, um, you know, God chose her slash us slash our family to go through this ordeal um, because he knew on the other side of it, it would make us that much stronger. That's true. That's true. That's true. We are strong. We did it though. And we here. My journey's not over. I still have a little bit to go, but the hardest part is done. So I know if God got me through the hardest, that same God is going to get me through this next part that's going to be a breeze. So know whatever you are going through, do not let it consume you. We serve somebody higher that already has you covered and know that you got this.
Thank Tamika and Garrett for their beautiful testimony, for being so transparent in their testimony. And also we want to say, Tamika survivor, and how do you become a, be a survivor? Is being an overcomer. How do you be, become be an overcomer? Is trust in Jesus, because he died on the cross over 2,000 years ago, that we can have trust, faith in him, that we will have joy and peace. We thank him for what he has done for Tamika, and he can do it for you too. If you're sitting in your house, in your home, in your car, somewhere right now, and you have never accepted Jesus as your personal Savior, here's your opportunity. The hand has been extended to you. Text me up, inbox me, message me. I'd love to sit down and talk with you and introduce you to the man that's called, the man that's named Jesus. God bless you, and remember, when praises go up, blessings come down. We see you next time.